New this morning, uh, fintech giant Stripe out with its annual letter. It reveals some new financial details of one of the world's largest private companies. Stripe announcing it has now surpassed $1 trillion in total payment volume in 2023. That's an increase of 25% from the prior year. The company also saying it was, quote, robustly cash flow positive and that it expects that to continue in the year ahead. In an exclusive interview, I spoke with Stripe co-founder and President John Collison and started out by asking him about the factors that have driven this growth. There has uh, been a lot of growth uh, with uh, enterprise customers uh, for us. Uh, that's a really exciting trend. We actually just announced uh, Hertz is working with Stripe to uh, modernize their you know, car booking experience and have the best digital app experience. And lots more large enterprises tend to be coming to Stripe to uh, reinvent their product offerings. We're also noting, despite the fact that everyone's always you know, a bit doom and gloom about the startup ecosystem, especially with the funding trends, we have the data on what the startups are actually doing and how they're actually growing outside of funding. And despite the fact that funding is coming down, the startups themselves are, uh, are doing really well. And then the last one is maybe less of an overall industry trend, more specific to us. But, uh, you know, we're sharing a lot for the first time about our revenue automation stack. This is, you know, subscription billing, companies coming to Stripe to manage all their subscription infrastructure. And that's now going to be quite a significant business right. for us. Uh, this year, we expect it to pass $500 million in uh, revenue run rate. I was struck by that it, the data that you presented about startups, the idea that you know, more recent startups are, are so much more cash flow positive, uh, for example, than the ones that started in 2019 and what you think that's a function of. I think there's two things going on, obviously. Firstly, the fundraising environment has changed. And so uh, we're seeing uh, startups growing with maybe less funding or less excessive funding than there was in 2021. Because obviously, things got a bit mad at the peak of 2021, where you had these you know, $100 million Series B rounds and things like this. And so I think you have startups focusing on more profitable growth. The second thing is that the kinds of startups we're seeing are changing. And so there's tons of AI startups. Think of all the, you know, OpenAI and Midjourney and, you know, Suno.ai and uh, Anthropic and all these folks building on Stripe. And what we see with AI startups in particular, you know, they're growing very quickly. They're growing, they grew by 250 percent last year, you know, the sector of AI startups overall. But what we're seeing with those is because inference costs are so high, high for AI products, that you actually tend to see paid products from these startups much earlier than you would see from, uh, from other companies. What is your, your take on just the state of play as it relates to the consumer, the strength of the consumer in this environment right now? What are you seeing? We spent all of last year with people predicting all manner of doom and gloom in the winter in Europe and everything like this. Everything we've seen so far is that consumer spending is, you know, has held up real well. And, you know, that continues all the way through to this month. That obviously isn't a prediction about kind of a future state of affairs. And in general, you know, we have present day data rather than necessarily something that, you know, predicts uh, quite a number of months into the future. But everything we see is quite robust. You also talk about this uh, new billing systems business. And I I'm curious in terms of revenue mix, if you, if you were to make a pie chart of Stripe over the next five years, what you think the, the revenue mix ends up looking like? Five years ago, the revenue from this uh, suite of products was de minimis. Uh, now, uh, you know, we just announced that this year we expect it to pass a $500 million run rate. It's growing much quicker, obviously, than the kind of the, the overall Stripe business. And we think it's growing much quicker because this is such a uh, hair on fire problem for businesses. You know, it's so frequently the case that we talk to businesses and the one of the primary things that's blocking them is they actually just kind of can't build for their products. They have some big IT transformation project that's slowing things down. And it's actually, you know, we get into detail in the letter. It's actually just like a pretty complex tech systems challenge for them. You've probably experienced it as a you know, consumer when you want to go to subscribe for something, you know, when you want to, you know, your favorite media property or newspaper or something like this. And you're like, why are they making it so hard for me right. to give them my money? That's not good for you. That's not good for them. And so that's been taking off very quickly because it's such an acute problem for businesses. Uh, you mentioned AI in the context of startups. I'm curious about how you are using AI itself in the context of Stripe. Uh, we've been using it very extensively, and uh, we've found, honestly, that 
LLMs are very powerful for, I would say, augmenting human performance and making people more productive. And so, you know, maybe you've had this experience of, you know, you're going to um, ChatGPT uh, or you're going to Claude or, you know, one of these AI models uh, and you're kind of going back and forth with it to work through a problem. And so I think people tend to too quickly jump to the paradigm of robots eating the jobs, you know, will Andrew Ross Sorkin be replaced uh, by a, a, an AI? I think the, you know, much more common pattern we see is maybe people getting 10, 20, 30 percent more productive uh, in their jobs. And so you get an overall productivity increase, but it maybe looks different. I also wanted to ask you about uh, a little bit of this year. You stepped in as the interim CFO for a period of time, or I should say last year. Uh, I'm curious what it was like having to right size the business after what was a massive, massive growth period. Yeah, we uh, luckily were out of that uh, that dark period now, and uh, uh, Stefan Tomlinson uh, joined late last year as our uh, CFO, and he has been great to work with. But as you mentioned, I spent a decent chunk of last year uh, as our CFO. Honestly, it was a fabulous experience. I think all founders should spend a while being a CFO of their um, uh, business. It's highly educational, and you get this uh, much better fingertip feeling for the uh, for, for the business. But look, I think 2023 was in a way good for a number of businesses. You know, we talked about this in the startup context, but I think there was more of a focus on the the business fundamentals. And, you know, we spent a lot of time focusing on that top line growth. What segments were absolutely key to our, uh, you know, expansion, like getting more enterprise on Stripe, like continuing right. to serve the startups really well and, you know, the revenue automation and stuff like that, and ensuring that, you know, operating expenses don't grow out of line with that growth. And so I think it was actually a pretty healthy period for us and for a lot of businesses.